So what's the get down? Hip hop culture lifestyle show. Let me start from the beginning. Yes, when sir. I first got into the game, okay, um, this becoming an actual scratch DJ, mm. you know, um, Grandmaster Flash and Theodore were the two guys that I really looked up to. They, mm. they I heard uh, a cassette tape of them. Um, this was bef they had records out, mm -hmm. but I didn't really. Kn they're not doing much on the record because back in them days, um, hip hop records were were being played. They didn't have samples. Right, right. They had a band playing them. Right, right, right. So it wasn't until I was like I was getting these um, these New York underground like live party tapes, mm. and Flash would be on there cutting these breaks, and Theodore would be cutting these breaks, and that's what got me into DJing, man. Like I wanted to be, I wanted to do that. All right. You know, and then you fast forward and then I ended up hearing DXT mm. and he had a brand new style. All right. And I started learning that. And then from that point on, I took what DXT was doing and started creating my own things right. with it. So, you know, I was big on like making noise, but noise that was danceable, mm -hmm. you know, Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, um, I used to listen to these uh, these these um, they, what do they call like edits, mm -hmm. like the Latin rascals and right. stuff like that. They used to have like a say if it was um, Shannon, mm -hmm. let the music play. Mm -hmm. It'd be let the music, let, 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 let. right, right. I was trying to copy that with doing it with my hands. So that. that's where all that all that stuff came from. Yep. So basically, you mimicking the record is how that you they came did up with, with your with, 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 Yeah, that they did with machines. Right, right, right. I was mimicking that using my hands. I saw mm -hmm. uh, this brother from Philly. Mm -hmm. I saw a videotape of him doing this scratch, which was a new style that I have not I didn't, I've never seen before. Okay, and he basically had the record going. Um, it's time. Uh, 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 it's time. Uh, 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 uh. That was the pattern. Right, uh, right, right. Uh, 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 like he was pulling it back. Yeah, he, had, yeah, he was yeah, using yeah, a fader. Yeah. He was just yeah. going, uh, 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 like uh -huh. cutting the sound in and out. But right. that was the pattern. All right. You know, you know, for me, man, you know, we I ha we all learn from something. We right. see something right. that intrigues us and mm -hmm. say, you know what? I could take that and turn it into something different. Mm -hmm. You know, I never do anything the way that some the way I saw it. If mm -hmm. I can't enhance it I won't touch it mm -hmm. so basically I was uh, practicing that mm -hmm. and back in the day man I was heavy into the girls man you know what I'm saying <laughs> like and me and my homie we had a double date so right. he was like yo yo fam let's get out of here man you know what I'm saying we're gonna be late yeah. so I cut the the, uh, the turntable off while it was still spinning right. using that er, 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 but it was slowing down so it was going uh, 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 right, right, and I right. pulled the record. I was like, "Ooh, wait a minute! What the hell's going on?" I might. So when I came back from the date, I started messing with that sound. So my transformer at that time sounded like the actual cartoon, because now I'm slowing it. I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it the way that I saw it. Like mm -hmm. he was like, "It's time." Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. I'm doing it. It's time. Right, right. Extending it giving it rhythm uh -huh. and turning it into an actual transformer sound. Uh -huh. Now, I started doing that and uh, everybody caught on to it. Mm -hmm. Now, it was, kills me because everybody starts trying to claim things. Right. And it's like, well, where were you when I right, right. when I did it? Like, like, Don't wait 30 years later to start coming out the woodworks talking about <laughs> you did something. You know what I'm saying? It's like a dude who, who was, who, who wasn't a tough guy yeah, 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 yeah. when he was coming up, right? Right, and then you wait thirty years later to everybody's grown, and you won't go in the gym, be pumping muscles, be like you tough now. Like, like come on, son, you know, it's like, where were you when right. I was doing it? Mm. Like, I was the guy that everybody was look, looking at, like, at that time. 
you know, because I had a total different style than anybody, mm -hmm. you know, even from the way I turn my turntables. Mm -hmm. Like, I tell people all the time, before me, mm -hmm. you look at how everybody had the turntables. Right. After me, everybody has the tone arm at the top, uh -huh. using a small Gemini mixer, uh -huh. right? I mean, after I started winning all these competitions and everything, everybody, I was, I was the, I was the guy, man. You know, I was the guy. So, so, coming from Philly, because you're from Philly, mm -hmm. go ahead, you know what I mean. So, coming from Philly, where you're the, you know, you the top guy. What was that like going to New York, trying to go ahead and, and you know, take it to the next At level? At that time, yeah. if you wasn't from New York mm -hmm. and you doing hip hop, yeah. nah, man. You wasn't getting no love like that, dog. You had to really work. Like, girls didn't even, the chicks from New York yeah. wouldn't even mess with you, man, unless you was from the five borough. For so, real. So how'd you survive with it? Well, um, there was a brother that I used to come down to Philly mm -hmm. and because he had a record out named Cutmaster DC. Mm -hmm. Cutmaster DC, me and him became super tight friends. And he was like, yo, Cash, you need to come up to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was him and Eric B because Eric B used to be Cutmaster D. You know, Eric B and Rakim. Right. Right. Eric used to be his manager. Mm -hmm. So they got me my first gig in New York and I ain't going to front. I was a little nervous. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, them dudes didn't dress like how we dressed in Philly. You know, Philly cats was real sharp, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? We haircuts and all that. Yeah. You know, we get up New York at that time. It was, they had uh, corn rolls and all that. That was the <laughs> army fatigues. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, you take a dude that's looking like some college student yeah. going into this hood party. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah. and I remember when I first set my turntables up, cats was like, yo, he's whack. Look how he's setting his turntables up. <laughs> so, you know, and plus they said it was from Philly. So it was this place called the Zodiac Club. A right. Real small place. All right. And then my name started, you know, getting known. I started getting known on the streets. Mm. So next thing I know, I got a chance to play at Latin Quarters, which mm. was the big club in New York. Right. And i never forget it. Everything was cool. I set up. The guy was like, hey, man, we got this dude, man. They say he's the baddest, the newest thing on the turntables. And he's from Philly. <laughs> the whole place was like, boo. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, everybody was there. Red <laughs> Alert, Biz Marquee, everybody was at this, the, yeah. there that night. Uh -huh. And my MC was nervous. Right. So I was like, dog, let me, let me, let me do this. So I took impeach the president, uh -huh. you know that, boom, stint, d -d -d stint, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh -huh. I turned that into Giz is chilling. So I had it going, boom, 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 tat, to doom, 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 tat. Uh -huh. But like a beat juggle. Right, right. It wasn't me doing it with one turntable. Yeah, it was me, yeah, like, yeah. Crowd went crazy. All them booze turned into cheers. From that day forth, New York has always embraced me. Because when we met, yeah. what you said, damn, I thought you was from New, New York. New York, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. Word up. Yeah, so New York has always been, like, it's always been home to me. Mm. So were you a battle DJ when you were in Philly or just when you got to New York? I'll be honest with you, bro. I never even battled. Word. Back then, man. I, I, I had battles that were supposed to take place, but right. as soon as I started, stepped into place, mm -hmm. the DJs ain't want none of that. They didn't want no problems, man. Like, I'm not being on no ego stuff, man. I'm just telling you this is real deal. Right, right. My very first battle, to be honest with you, yeah. was the new music seminar. Wow. Yeah. Like, head-to-head -head battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been in battles before. Hmm. So like, once you know, they'll, 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 they'll put them things on the flyers. Yeah, yeah. Cash money versus such and such. Mm -hmm. But it was no battle, man. So when you when you when did you get to the point to where you recognize like yo I'm I'm battling other you know what I'm saying me cast this like me when when did that happen That was a new music seminar Oh so that's when it actually started Yeah all yeah right, yeah, all right. yeah So once you started from there you were just a genius with with these tables or or you know when you from the new new music seminar all the way up or was it more I'm gonna be honest with thing? you man I think because when I was young um, I was a I was a 
step dancer. Oh, all right. Before break dancing and the b boying thing scene hit Philly, mm -hmm. we had a thing called stepping. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a um, maybe four or five guys doing the same step. Mm -hmm. We'd be at block parties battling other crews. I was in a, I was in like the best dance group at that time. They called the franchise dancers. Right, yeah, but we would, we would be battling guys like the, 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 the Flamingo dancers, the GQ steppers, mm. and stuff like that. It was a dance that never got out of Philly. Yeah. Yeah, like you would have to wear, like we, we used to go and get our clothes tailor-made, mm. right? And all of us would have, you know, like a like gray, gray pants on with mm. maybe a stripe down. Yeah. Thing. Like we all, dude, we look like the Temptations, fam. <laughs> so, so, so it's like college stepping, or, or no, man? It's like if you take um, like the uh, the we I always studied like mm. um, Fred Astaire, mm. the Nicholas Brothers, ah. like stuff like ta it's like mm. tap dancing mm. and stuff. But you're spinning, yeah. and you go on the floor and yeah. you do like the stuff like this. Uh -huh. it, but when you got four people doing the same thing, it looks so dope, man. I, I yeah, see you. I yeah, see you. yeah. I so, see. so I think. Me learning timing mm -hmm. from dancing and incorporating that with DJing is what kind of set me apart, apart from, from everybody, everybody else. Because like a lot of my friends always call me the, the human metronome. Because <laughs> like, yeah. whatever I'm doing, yeah. it's... Because yeah. you got to understand, you know, we call it scratch, D I mean, battling DJs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, man, you had to rock the party. You know, you you didn't want to throw somebody off, and you ain't gonna get no play from the ladies after that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what it was all about for me. Like, I'm trying to be that dude that get that girl right there, dog. That's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. I mean, that's why I became a DJ. Word. Yo, man, this dude. I never forget, man. I was a young boy. This um, DJ had his. He had a block party. Had mm -hmm. his equipment on the on the, on his porch. Yeah. Was rocking the party, dog. He had all the girls. Dig that. Like it was lined up. I'm like, yo. So that's where you got it from, right I'm like, there. I'm trying to be like him, son. <laughs> that's what it was all about. I can that's where it. I made the transition from 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 dancing mm -hmm. to the the DJ thing. And then I started really getting into, um, um, you know, what Flash and them guys was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you went on ahead and and you started battling, like. Like yo, who who who? Let me let's do it like this. Did you have a nemesis, you know, in in the whole battling scene, or was it just you know? Because I know that the DJ culture scene is different than what people think it is. They think y'all hate each other and y'all really be popping. Man, it's the biggest going brotherhood. to each other's houses, eating and stuff. So yeah, nah, we we listen, bro. We the DJs is all family, man. Like mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a competitive thing, but at the end of the day, man, we all it's all love, man. Did you battle a lot of female DJs coming up? I never battled a female. All right. Until so, the new music seminar. Until the, yeah. So mm -hmm. when you battled at the new music seminar and uh, go ahead, go on and tell the story that way. I oh yeah, uh, uh, DJ Jazzy Joyce. Yes. Uh, she basically, I never seen her spin before, mm -hmm. and she wasn't your typical like what I thought a female DJ would mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. You know, she was actually just as good if not better than any of the the, the male djs that were in that competition mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so she got up there and she's from new york mm -hmm. and she started catching it i mean catching it to the point that the crowd's going crazy right. she had this ponytail yeah. at the time she was spinning around that ponytail was whipping <laughs> back i'm like yo I got to get her out of here. Right, like, right. I can't even let it go to the judges. Like, it's got to be no mistake that I'm the winner. She was that she dope. Made, yo, she made me do a routine that I was holding for the later rounds. I had to get her up out of here, man. I couldn't play no games. <laughs> she was that sick. She was that sick, man. Like, Did for you ever come? For, go ahead. I don't even like to say because she's a female. Right, right, right. You know, right. but you didn't really see females at that time that was like that Mm -hmm. to that level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she was at that level man absolutely i tell her all the time like she's like you know i almost had you cash I said, you put the fire under my ass joyce no doubt about it <laughs> so to be honest with you that whole battle mm -hmm. she was the one that i think to me personally that gave me the heat so she gave you the most problems in that she battle. gave me the problems brother 
So, so the the cat that you wound up battling after that, mm-hmm. you dig what I'm saying? Was it was it any type of situation where you had to pull something out again? No, man. Because to be honest with you, he had the big battle was supposed to be between me and um, Bobcat. Mm-hmm. Okay, who was LL Cool J's DJ at the time? I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about Bobcat except for the work that he did on the the records so mm-hmm. I knew he was dope mm-hmm. you know but I didn't know how it would be going battling you mm-hmm. know the records how you cut on records and right. how you battle is two different things All right. so um, yeah I was prepared for whatever mm-hmm. the best I could be and but he didn't show mm-hmm. and I remember Ice T had brought uh, it was Cooley D- and, DJ uh, and DJ Poo mm-hmm. but I think that Cooley probably was a better DJ than Pooh. Mm-hmm. So, but Cooley ended up losing in the early rounds. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, Pooh was the only DJ left for me to go up against. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden they said, oh, Pooh got sick. Mm-hmm. So they had to put, they put Cooley back in. Mm-hmm. And all the DJs that lost were very upset because they're like, well, how does he get a chance to be in? We, we you know. Right. So, it was some some crazy stuff going on with that. Right. Then they they tell me, Cash, um, you've already won, and but we just want to put you up against somebody. So just 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 coast. Mm-hmm. So if you hear the tapes, I never I cut its time and all that before in the in the I think in the um, the battle. Right. I never use the same records twice. Right, mm-hmm. so I just cut up his time up because I went first. I was just mm-hmm. then he came. He came on after me. And he did this most. He did this incredible routine. I'm like, yo, I thought we was coasting. <laughs> I mean, he was killing it, man. Yeah, I'm like, yo, when's he? Yeah. When's he gonna stop, yeah, man? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it, it threw me off. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, damn, are they trying to set me up to lose? All right, that's what I was thinking. Right. And back at that time, we didn't have Serato. I only mm. had a certain amount of records. Mm. So I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, what can I do? Like, mm-hmm. And that's when I did the Peter Piper thing. And that was a routine that I hadn't really perfected, mm-hmm. but it was enough to get me over. Right. So, But if I would have known that this battle had counted yeah. the way that it, it yeah. did, yeah. I would have done something that I had already planned to do. Mm-hmm. So it would have been different. But right, right. it wasn't like that. It's like he, they threw me off, man. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why the battle was so so tight. I mean, Cooley got up there, did his thing, man. No yeah. doubt about it. No, no disrespect to him at all. He got up and did what he was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But that was why it was so close. So I know a lot of people was upset over the outcome mm-hmm. of it. But it was a lot of... St- the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, man. Like, you know, they were like, well, how is he back in? Mm-hmm. And then I heard somebody saw Pooh at the club later that night. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Is well, that know, what we Pooh doing? super producer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, you know. man. But those were the times, man. Like I said, to this day, man, I got nothing but love for my DJ brothers, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I, me and uh, Joe Cooley and Rodney O, we've done shows together and yeah. joked and just man, it's just all love, man. Like that's, that's why right. I tell you, there is no, there's a brotherhood amongst us. We don't, we ain't on so much ego mm-hmm. that we can't get along. You know, it's like it's like two boxers boxing. Somebody has to win. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you might not have liked the outcome, but you're not hating right. me. We right. can, we, me. I will say this, and I told Joe this. I said, man, we gave the world something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the best did. battles ever. Before this, before us we set the template for what the rest of these D, with these dj battles would would be like mm-hmm. you understand mm-hmm. so where did you go from there with it as far as the dj battle uh i i met a guy named tony prince mm-hmm. there who runs the dmc right he asked if i would like to be a part of their dmc mm-hmm. competition he said but you have to go and you have to win the you, the american championship mm-hmm. so they flew me out to san diego I ended up winning that, and I remember distinctively, man, when I landed, man, I was so, I was sick, man. I had caught some kind of bug or whatever, wow. man. So uh, I sweated it out the best I could, mm. you know, and did my uh, my routine. I won that. 
So then they flew me. I represented United States in the world finals. And by me winning that world finals, like when I tell you everybody was there, mm -hmm. like it was, it was held at the Royal Albert Hall which is where the queen of mm -hmm. England sees her opera. So you, it was a massive place, man. Mm -hmm. And that day right there is the day that I think I changed the world for BJN. Because mm -hmm. everybody, all these big house DJs that are now big house DJs now, mm -hmm. um, were all there. They saw me, they saw me be crowned and um, it was something that world has never seen before. And that's, that's why I think, you know, everybody has been studying my style from that point on, you know, like those little mixers, like the Gemini mixers, they sold out everywhere because everybody wanted to be, wanted to have that setup I had. And that's when the, mm. everybody turned the turntables mm. with the tone on at the top. Right. So what makes me upset about that is the fact that they kind of stripped me from that. It's like, you know, they call it Philly style or battle style. Mm. When no DJ from Philly, you know, Philly DJs, the true Philly style mm. is two turntables on one side. Mm. That's how all the DJs were spinning. Mm. It wasn't until people saw me do this and then that's when they, you know, decided to change. So I would like them to call that the cash money style instead of battle style, Philly style. Word know? up, word up. Yeah. What made you use the uh, the smaller mixer? That's all I could afford. Ah. Yeah, man. Bro, so you made on, something out of nothing. Brother, I was cutting grass, doing whatever I could do, to, you know. I wasn't born with no silver spoon, <laughs> man. Look, you look, I took care of the mixers the best I could because I knew I couldn't afford you know, to get Tell another me story one. story with you said you had to put a screen. Yeah, <laughs> man, I, had, I was pouring um, WD-40 in there, right? And I was, like I was telling you the other day, like, I would, you know, pick the mixer up to put it back in a box. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, damn, why do I got to, I'm always having like this oil stain on my shirt. Mm -hmm. And so my cousin, who was a, like a, a engineer, mm -hmm. he was like, yo, man. That's oil pouring out the bottom of that. He goes, why are you pouring oil in the fader? I was like, to keep it loose. He goes, no, you got to use tuner spray because it's a non-residue and then it will evaporate. I didn't know this until he told me that. <laughs> so you just ran around messing all your shirts. Bro, I, it was like I was eating a water ice all the time. I had a, like a, a cherry stain here, but dog. It was crazy, man. Oh, man. <laughs> So, so once you won the world title, you know, I mean, I know we're not going to, you know, use no names and then who are mm -hmm. there. Like you said, everybody was there. Yeah. What did you get into after that? I had a record. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I was signed to Sleeping Bag Records. Mm -hmm. Me and Marvelous had our first single, uh, Ugly People Be Quiet and Play It Cool. Boom, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. boom, 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 On the boom, wheels of steel, he is. That's hard, right? Yeah, yeah, man. That. Who produced? Mantronics. Yeah, Mantronics produced that record. Uh, uh, what happened was he was going through contractual mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. with Sleeping Bag, and he left Sleeping Bag. Right. So Sleeping Bag didn't have enough faith in me to produce my own record because I was a new artist. Mm -hmm. So they ended up getting um, Herbie Love, Love from who produced um, Salt, Salt and Pepper. And Pepper. Yeah. 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 You know. So we ended up uh, having him do that if you listen to the song it goes herbie love the love, love supply it's supposed to say herbie love and mantronics oh. but they edited his name out that's yeah. crazy yep. that's crazy so so now you know the from the success of that record right there mm -hmm. did that come like did that change as far as you being you know world champion versus being an artist now it did but people wanted to see the DJ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what was really, I mean, it, 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 how can I put it? It gave me more power for the industry to see me now instead of just seeing me in some little club. Mm -hmm. So now I'm doing festivals and tours. Like I'm on tour with Slick Rick. We're on tour with Hammer. Mm -hmm. We're doing like spot dates on all these different tours. Plus I have my own tours, you know. So Did you we, choose your MC? I had two MCs, man. Yeah, I had a Cool Breeze Steve and I had Marvelous. All right. Um, what happened was Marvelous 
me and him always argued, man, because of um, he just didn't put the effort as much as I did or Cool Breeze did as far as, you know, mm -hmm. practicing your art, man. Right, right. Your craft, I mean. Right. Right? And, um... Was he from Philly also? Yeah, we all lived around each other. All right. And, um, but Mantronics wasn't feeling Cool Breeze Steve, so mm -hmm. he ended up hooking me up with uh, his MC that he was working with, mm -hmm. who happened to be Bryce Love from Groove Theory. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bryce was my MC for a while. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Yep. Are you serious? Yeah, man. A lot of people don't know that. Ask him if you ever speak. Could he go? Bryce was nice. You got to you got to understand. Bryce was with Mantronics. Right, he was part. Right. Remember they had yeah, that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, I got do, that. Do, 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 yeah. Do, 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 that do, 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 do. Gotta have your love. Mm -hmm. He was. It was Mantronics, Bryce, and um, a, a female singer. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. So, but the problem was Bryce lived in Queens. Mm -hmm. I'm in Philly, so the distance was. Right. We couldn't, you know, it was hard for us to connect. Mm -hmm. So me and Marv ended up patching things up, our differences, and then Mantronics like Marv, and boom, that's how it happened, bro. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's past that time now. So if you had your choice, like, did you choose your MC or, or was yeah. it? Yeah. All right, so. We, it, we, we, we grew up together. No, no, I got you with that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. like, you know, coming, you know, as far as how the game elevated. Not back then. I right. I know what you said. But how the game elevated. If you could have had any MC t to be the DJ for, you know what I mean, just in, in your mind frame, who, who would it have been? It would have been LL Cool J. Word? I, mean, I cut his records already. Like, LL told me thank you. I can believe that. Because I made his record sell. Think about it for a second. All right. Rec rock the his rec his record rock the all rock his records you know rock the bells uh what was the other one um I, calling me a sucker boy yeah. and all you would only normally buy one copy mm -hmm. but the DJs wanted to copy my routines so back then you know there was no Serato so you would buy two copies of this that same record uh -huh. They would fry because you you know. Yeah, yeah. Then you buy two more copies and two more copies <laughs> and two more copies. So all those sales are going to LL's pocket. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So so, so Russ is he Russ is sending you a, a a thank you as well, huh, Russell Simmons. Man, I need some bread, bro. <laughs> you know the thank yous. The, look, you can write me a Hallmark card and be like, yo, here's a check, bro. Yeah, word you know up, what I mean? Like, not, nah, but like I said, man, he didn't choose me. Mm -hmm. to do that right you know i chose his records because l's voice just i don't know it just it just was strong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and you know i remember a lot of um uh, other artists used to be like yo man how come you you cash in philly always be spending ll cool j's records man i i, I, I got some shit that i'm on my record i'm like dog i, I ain't nothing L just always had the night the dopest punch lines mm -hmm. that just resonated with me man you know and it came out the way it came out. Yeah. So so once you did the, uh, after the success with the album, you know what I'm saying, Ugly People Be Quiet and all mm -hmm. of that, you know what I mean? And get on to, to the, you know, to what you're heading to next. Were you guys still, you and Marvin, were y'all still on the same page as far as where you were going to go? Or yeah, you, man, we, 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 we opened a lot of doors for artists, man, because we were, you know, being the fact that I was, I won overseas mm -hmm. now. These countries that didn't even have hip hop there, mm. but had a small hip hop right, community, right, right, right. they now want to see me. So we are playing countries that never had like international artists come through there. Damn. Like I remember, mean, we went to um, one of our big shows was in Brazil, and to this day, when last time I was in Brazil, people still remember that show because it was it was it was a it was a incredible time, man. Like, it was jam-packed. They couldn't really, because the people were very poor. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm telling you, they saw, you they did saw the thing. magic. Yeah, man. And that's why people hold me in such a high regard, man, because, you know, we went to these countries, man, and did our thing. Right. Really put, planted our flag there, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, plus, we're good dudes, man. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I've never been on no ego stuff, man. Right. I've always tried to remain humble. Like, to be honest with you, somebody knows me, wants to reach out, shake my hand. I'm so excited that you even know me because there's a whole lot of other th people and artists that you could be looking at, but you chose me, man. That bring, that means a lot to me, man. 
Exactly. Like you guys are helping me feed my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how could I be like I'm bigger than you? Mm -hmm. Like I need you. Respect. That's real spit. So what what did you tap into um, after the music? You know, after you guys weren't making records anymore. What did you okay. tap into? Sleeping bag folded. Our album went gold, and then it started declining. Me and Marv ended up going our separate ways. I started getting into production and stuff. Um, I started, um, I got an opportunity to do some scratches on uh, PM Dawn. Um, a good friend of mine knew them and he was like, hey man, would you like to go make some money, go do these scratches on this album? He goes, I, you know, I'm not as good, nice as you. And they kind of wait, 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 wait. You said PM Dawn. I, I, we talking about the beads. And, yeah, and PM the, and Dawn. The, and the I was their and yes, everything. Yes, indeed. Right. Yeah, I was, I was their DJ. Um, the Bliss album. I was. Yeah. yeah, when they did the Bliss album, mm -hmm. not Set Adrift. All right. The album after that, mm -hmm. right. I was their DJ. Uh -huh. Actually, I produced two songs on their album. Word. Yeah, yeah, and and did a remix that uh, Hype Williams did a video for. Dig that. Yeah, man. So, um, um, way that happened, my man was like, hey, man, they kind of want you. Would you mind flying over seas? You know, I didn't have nothing else going on. I was like, well, what's the check looking like, man? He was like, oh, they're going to give you this. I was like, bet. Let me go get that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm just like you, bro. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. Oh, these dudes seem a little weird, man. Mm -hmm. Like they got the beads and psychedelic things. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, let me go just knock this out, get this check, come back home. Mm -hmm. Got over there. Them dudes was like, nigga, what? what? I'm like, <laughs> what? You talk like that? Like I'm thinking they from like overseas something. Word. I'm like, yo, where y'all from? They goes, yo, man, we from Jersey City. I say. Yeah. Up there, like naughty by nature, and like Queen Latifah. And he goes, Yeah, <laughs> word. I didn't even know that. Yo, immediately, man, we were like that. Yes. Bruh, regular cats. But people don't know their father was one of the uh, members of Cool in the Gang. Ah. Mm hmm. Ah, so, yeah, so they got it early. Yeah, so. But because you see their videos, mm -hmm. you automatically think that they're into some yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. When they're not, that's just that was just their gimmick. Right. You know, everybody needs a gimmick. Mm -hmm. And they were dope at what they did. Yeah. You know, so they asked me, they said, Cash, you don't have to go back, man. You wanna be a part of the group. I was like, hell yeah. Next thing you know, it's the best move I've ever made, man. I never knew what pop success was until I linked up with them. Yeah, because like, they, they like, had pop success. That they had show. pop success. Let me tell you, I was on tour with Paul McCartney, Word. Lenny Kravitz, Peter Gabriel, uh, 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 like all these massive groups that I would never, ever be around. Paul McCartney is such a, a, a he was such a fan of what I did because there was a part in the show mm -hmm. where they were like, Cash, show them why you DJ Cash Money. Yeah. So they give me a chance to get off. Mm -hmm. Paul McCartney would, no lie, every night be behind the, the curtains like peeping. And I ended up meeting his daughter, mm -hmm. Stella. Mm -hmm. We became real cool. She was like, my dad just loves you. You're, you're, you're part of the show. He's just like mesmerized like that. That's incredible. Because, you know, Artists are going to appreciate oh, artistry, artists, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, me and him ended up talking. Man, he's big in the, you know, because I'm a big collector. Right. We got to talk about cartoons yeah. and stuff. He's a big <laughs> cartoon collector. So it was crazy, man. Yeah. Music so, does bring uh, a lot of different bridges together. I told you, man, it's the universal. Um, I agree. It's the universal language. It's the, it's the universal frequency, man, mm -hmm. that connects us, bro. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what color, mm -hmm. what race, what anything. It's the only... How many times I've been... It's been many times I've been over to Japan, mm -hmm. and they don't even speak English like that. They know every word of that, them yeah. songs. Yeah, like, like, I pulled... They just call and, uh, crowd, uh, call and response. Like, I'll be like, insane in the membrane. <laughs> insane in the brain. 
<laughs> but then you'd be like, yo, man, what's up? Huh? I don't speak mm-hmm. English. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You gotta rap a song. Yeah. Yeah. So so after I'm still stuck. You messed me up with the PM Don thing. Mm-hmm. But dig though. So after the PM Don, uh how long do how long were you with them? I was with them for the for the Bliss album, All right. man. Yeah, right. that's the reason why. Remember, you was like, "Yo, man, you was always out here." Yeah, I was yeah. because we were doing all. We did both Disney worlds. I don't know which one is out here. Is that Disney? Disneyland. World? We did Disneyland for a whole month. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was us, John Sakata, who was with um, what's the, the lady's name? Gloria Stevan. Yeah, she he was part of her crew oh, okay. and the group High Five. Mm. Yeah, we were doing Disneyland for a whole month, like two shows a night. Take that. Yeah, and so after those shows, I would be go to the hotel. I'd be over Ice T's house. Remember, I was telling you, I'd be yeah, out here yeah, with Ice T. Yeah, yeah. Ice T had um. He, at his house at that time, he had the Mortal Kombat game, yeah. which was just came into the, just yeah. got into the arcade. Mm-hmm. So it cost a lot of money. Right. He had that joint in his crib. I'd be like, yo, Ice, yo, yo you coming up? Yep, I'm coming up. <laughs> and, you know, we'd be playing games and Ice be just, you know, put me up on game, mm-hmm. you know, about just, just life, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got so much respect for Ice, man. Like, mm-hmm. like, what he was telling me, you know, it didn't go in one ear and out the other. Like, it, it really, I applied it to my life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how the game is and what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So yeah, he really is like an an, an um a, a hidden he's godfather. A gem. He's, he's you know a gem, I mean? man. So, yeah. Yeah. He's because he's. he's, he, cause he's People don't understand Rhyme Syndicate and how many people, you know, he has signed, how many people he put on, you mm-hmm. know, how many people he helped out. So, yeah, I'm, it doesn't surprise me hearing you say that. Yep. So so once you, you left uh, PM Don, what, what did you, you know, get into? Uh, I was, I've been, like, trying to do production and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and mm-hmm. but I had started really DJing overseas a lot. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I've been playing clubs like nonstop, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, festivals and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that was been been my breadwinner. But then, um, you know, pandemic and all that stuff happened. Uh, no, I'll tell you this: what happened? I ended up because the game is changing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, they start coming out with things like celebrity DJs and mm-hmm. start labeling DJs. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not. Now I'm not just a DJ. They want to give me a name, a open format DJ or this type of DJ <laughs> and all that, like just step. I'm like, yo, what's going on? So the, it started becoming too political, man. Mm-hmm. So I was getting a little, little, not a little, a lot frustrated mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm looking at these booking agents. First of all, you guys are not music lovers. Mm-hmm. OK, you're a button pushing type of person. Right. <laughs> like I never needed. No social media stuff, my numbers to be up to validate who I am. I've always been DJ Cash Money because of the work I put in in the time to make me yes, sir. who I am. Mm-hmm. I never needed that. But mm-hmm. the way that these things go now is about, oh, you don't have enough followers. Like, how much sense does that make? If you have a million followers, you book me to do a gig. Are you going to have a million people at your gig? How do you even know what if these people are in your in the town? Where? You know what I'm saying? You don't know where all those followers are coming from. They could be overseas or something. Yeah. Like it's the dumbest thing ever. And this I think that's what killed it killed the game. Mm-hmm. You know, because you got these people who are not music lovers. You know? That's why I said the other day we went to go meet mm-hmm. uh me and Finesse, mm-hmm. went to meet Adrian Young, mm-hmm. and it's like I met this my first time meeting this brother, man, mm-hmm. and I felt like I knew him. Mm-hmm. Because he's a collector, he has that passion for the music. Mm-hmm. Like I'm 56 years old, man. I'm still collecting. You still spinning too. I'm still spinning. It's it's my love and my passion for it, man. Like honestly, if you took this away from me, man, you might as well kill me, bro. I'm dead. I'm no good. I'll be a a grumpy old man <laughs> for real. Get off my lawn. Yeah, get off my lawn. Yeah, yes sir. Get off my lawn, youngin. 
<laughs> Wait, hold on. You slid over your production, man. Like you ain't, yeah. you know, you oh, produce okay. some stuff. Quit playing. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. What yeah. did you produce, sir? I okay. When PM Dawn, the whole PM Dawn thing stopped, I started uh, getting into production, and I found that to be very challenging because it started becoming click clickish because a lot of the A and R guys that you would give your music to to give to the artist were producers themselves. Right. So if you give if I if they give that to the artist, that's taking the chance of money out of their pocket that they could possibly make be making. That's what I was running into. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I started making my own mixtapes, kind of like making them like that's I came out with a series called W K I S F M. Mm-hmm. Kiss my ass, FM, right? And I was making doing own, my own remixes and mm-hmm. stuff. And um, I'd have like freestyles of beats that I made. And this one particular tape called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was like had uh, the Roots on there, uh, Q-Tip, Fife, and all these guys on there, right? Mm-hmm. What happened was I asked Q-Tip, Q-Tip if he could do a freestyle. He was like, Cash, come on up this day. I'm going to be in the studio. I drove up New York. Next thing you know, Buster Rhymes comes in. I never met Buster, right? I played like about six or seven beats. <clears throat> they rhymed on every last beat. And so I took what they did. I put one of the songs on there. And next thing I know, I'm getting a call from Buster Rhymes saying, Cash, yo, son. We want to use that what you that that record you that thing you did man on your mixtape. We're gonna put this in a movie called Rhyme and Reason. Right. He goes, yo, get with Mona Scott, cause you know what I'm saying we want to give you your due, whatever. I was like, word. That's how that happened. That's that song Wild Hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So mm-hmm. that um, uh, what else did I do? I just, I did a lot of remixes and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Like I, I did stuff with the Roots. You know, of course, they from Philly. Yeah, that was gonna be a question. Yeah, and that and another one of those songs made it on the soundtrack called "The Wood," mm. the the Wood movie, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you can't sit here and make it seem like the production. You know, you you didn't have no success at it. No, nah, man. Listen, man, everything. To be honest with you, yes, everything sir. I ever touched mm-hmm. ended up in a movie or something, which is the craziest thing. Look. The movie that I did, the, the song I did with PM Dawn mm. was in CB4 movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when uh, um, um, Chris Rock and them got thrown out of a club or something, mm-hmm. they're playing that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? So, 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 where, so, do you, well, I ain't gonna ask that question because mm-hmm. I know you prefer DJing over producing, but. No, you, I, it, to be, oh. I, 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 to be honest with you, I love producing, but I love DJing because I can have a chance to play my song to see if it works in a club. Like, I'll mm-hmm. throw it in and just see. I'm like, okay, it's still keeping the floor moving. We in the right direction. You know, that's what I love about DJing. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So you love moving the crowd. That's, I've always been a party rocker, man. Like, like I told you, that's the way I started in the game. It wasn't about scratching. Mm-hmm. You know, scratching was just icing on the cake. Dog, I was trying to play enough music to get women to be come up to the DJ booth, dog. Like that was my motivation. So, like, what is it like for you being as sick as you are mm-hmm. DJing without a crowd into social media? I love it, man. Hmm. I love it. I love the fact that I'm in my home, whereas though I don't have to hear somebody ask me for a request. I don't have to hear no bullshit if you don't like a song or nothing stupid. Like, like I'm playing from what I, what feels good to me now, and it works. Like, I was on Facebook, which I find it very challenging now because this whole social media thing is just it's it's a monster, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like if you don't have that engine behind you, mm-hmm. you you're in the you're in a pot like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like this, even though as much stuff as I have done. And all the accolades I've won, I feel like a normal mortal man, like because of the internet. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's just the weirdest thing. Cause you know, to me, man, I'm pri- I'm private, right. and I didn't come up in this era to be like bragging and boasting of what I have. That's why social media is kind of hard for me because 
you know, people like, man, you got to post more. You got to do this. Dude, I don't, I, I can't tell you every second of my day, dog. Like, Word. I'm taking a shit right now. Word. Should I be posting about that? <laughs> like, oh, I'm eating at this restaurant. Oh, yeah. There's food. Look at the food. Like, no, that's that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd rather, if I'm going to post about something, it's going to be something that I, I found in a collection, mm -hmm. like a rare record mm -hmm. or an artifact that is super dope, that's historic. Mm -hmm. That's what I would rather post about. Not post about. I'd be seeing dudes, this this the killer with me mm -hmm. with the whole social media. When you be seeing these dudes in the hospital, be like, they be like this. <laughs> Pray for me, fam. I'm going through it. Like, first of all, dog, you want the pity party. You took about seven photos, photos, and you picked. Oh, I don't like that one. I'm, I'm going to pick this one here. Okay, I'm going to post this one. Like, come on, man. You got tubes and shit out. You, what are we doing, fam? Just jump, man. <laughs> Just jump. You looking for the pity party. That's what I don't like. You know, it's like a. This internet is, it's, everything is vain, man. Right. Like, in, it's, it's like an, an illusion. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not who I am, man. What you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. If I don't have something, I'm going to tell you, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to see it and be like, yeah, this is me, man. With all, all my cars and shit. Knowing you taking the picture, you know what I'm saying? That's like me being out here with Russ, <laughs> taking pictures in his car. Be like, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm just living the life, man. You know, that's what I do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's not who I am, man. I I can dig that. I can dig that. You got me dying laughing over here because I. <laughs> but you know it's real. It's true. No, but you know we talk about other yeah. stuff, so I already you know, know where it's you true, went. Man. With. Yeah, yeah. Like that's 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 not not me, man. Like, dude, let me work to get mine. Right. And then you'll see the perks when I be like, yo, man, I'm in my my thing. This this mine. Dig that. I'm not gonna sit up here when we on Front Street. Mm hmm somebody else's stuff mm -hmm. you know i'm That's in a luxurious fit. luxurious house right now like yeah. come on mm -hmm. this, is my, I'm, this is my man's joint <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> i'm just happy to be a part of his life i call him family you word know what up. i'm saying word it's up. word so let me ask you this i'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you you know what i'm saying a question that that i always been curious of because mm -hmm. i know you said you never had a nemesis but who was the one that you knew when it came to battling after you got the belt, because you continued to uh, to battle, right? Right. All right. So how uh, how many times were you world champion? I was only once. They All wouldn't right. let. They wouldn't allow me. <laughs> they wouldn't allow you. Yeah, the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they they wouldn't even let me perform. Is that right? I came in as a judge. Yeah. Why they um, wouldn't let you perform? He said that I would overshadow the winner because I was scheduled to do a routine. Right. I'll be honest with you, that routine would have been crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. But what I was going to say is, no, allow me to do this mm -hmm. because it can show the champions mm -hmm. what you can become. Because mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. something. I won the world championship, right? Mm hmm well, no, I won all the DJ competitions in America. Mm -hmm. I became a world champion representing the United States mm -hmm. through the DMC. Then our album came out. Mm -hmm. Dude, I was on a rocket ship. Yeah. yeah. So all that stems from the DJing. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you want to show that? But it was a bad mistake. And, you know, he, you know, we had to talk about it. But I was upset over that, man. Did you feel that they understood, you know, uh, the culture and, and where what you was trying to, you know, pervade it to everybody out there or what? Uh, they definitely understood. The one thing I'm going to tell you about Tony Prince from mm. DMC, he's a visionary. Mm. That man, I have so much love and respect for him, man, because he gave me a platform that allowed the world, not America, mm. the world to see. He took commercial the commercial side of the business and hip hop and merged it all in one pot. Do you know that I, when I was crowned the world championship, they were giving James Brown a lifetime achievement award the same night there. So James Brown saw me win. My, my James music Brown? hero. Wow. That's where I met him. <clears throat> That's saying something. And I, I'll be honest with you, man. It's an emotional thing for me, man. I met that man, and I hugged him. Where, where? I couldn't let him go. Yeah. Like, I was on some, like, yo, dude, like, you don't know what you mean to me, man. Right, like, right, like, right, like, right, right. Like, I saw you as a kid. 
to, you know, hip hop was started on yeah, James Brown yeah. breaks. So I'm cutting your yeah. records to for you to see, see how that came full circle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I say, man, this music thing, man, it's a passionate thing for me. That's why I say it's bigger than the music. It's a frequency and a connection. I, I'm telling you, it comes from our ancestors, man. Right. That's how we can relate mm -hmm. without even talking. Right. Yeah, see, you got me somewhere else. All right, we go, we go get powerful in a minute and get out here hey, man. motivational speaking and stuff. Bro, I'm telling you, I can only speak the truth nah, of what I'm I went through. You, you know what I'm saying? You. I'm, I'm telling you. you. I'm with you. You know? Who's that DJ where you was like, if they was on the bill, you, you was like, yeah, I'm going to have to, I can't play around. There was nobody at that nobody. time, man. Not to me. The destroyer, huh? That's my mindset. That's like that's like, that's like that's that's way I've always been. Yeah, I'm prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, afterwards I'll be like, "Damn, dude's nice." Yeah. But if we go into a competition, if I that's a sign of weakness. Like yeah. you think that that I'm going into a uh, a boxing match, right? I'm gonna be like, "Damn, I think dude can get me, man." I think I've got to no. You are showing weakness. I'm gonna show, even though I might think in my heart and my mind a little bit. I'm going to have that face on, like, yeah, you about to be into a war, nigga. Like, for real. You had to knock me out. That's the way I feel. I, feel I approach you. that with anything, and through music, through my DJing, through, that's just how I am. You know, people might think that sounds cocky or arrogant, but it's confidence. If you don't have confidence, like, when I approach a party, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm nervous and scared. Right. Inside, right. I can't let you see that. Yeah. Because if I let you see that, then I'm gonna let that crowd dictate to me, you know, mm -hmm. what they want. Right. You know. So I'm like, yo, y'all ready to get? Yeah, yeah. And it's been working for me for all these many years, man. Like, you know, even though I'm, I get nervous because you know, you might have a set or something that you want to play. Yeah. And you get there and you're like, hmm, they may not feel that. Right. Now you got to do, you got to make up something mm -hmm. on, on the fly. fly. Yeah, yeah. You know. And nine times out of ten, it works. I mean, it's been numerous times that that I cleared the floor. Yeah. But I already know you used to hearing this pop shit twenty five <laughs> times a day and a night. I mean, a, a day and night. So I know I could put that back on, and get you back on. You so know? how how do you feel about the music? The way they got this this monopoly. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. It's horrible, man. And it's like they got these kids feeling like like if you know I mean come on most of the people that you see or hear mm -hmm. are really not that talented right like that because they didn't come in the game for the passion of music mm -hmm. they came into it because oh man I'm getting paid that's mm -hmm. why everything is so the money oriented that, yeah. you know but yeah. you, you don't take that time to 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 home in on your craft that's why I, I was talking, I don't understand these young kids, man. Like, you dudes are making more money than we ever had a chance to make, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, guys are getting killed and locked up. And, like, I thought this was what it was about for you to be able to buy your mama a house. Mm -hmm. Get out of your mom's house, take care of your family for the rest of the <coughs> life. You know, start mm -hmm. businesses and things. That's what I always thought. That's what we did it for. Right. I don't understand it, man. Like, you making all this money. And getting locked up and shot and all this other nut stuff, man. I just don't understand these youngins, man. Well, I think a lot of them are trying to live the perception that they're. That's spitting. what I say. It's this thing today. It's an illusion. I agree. It's an illusion, man. It's not the real. You know, if you take, you know, like these artists. Like it really upsets me because you have an artist that. Well, a, a child that's going to school to learn the art of music mm -hmm. and they are, uh, 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 you know, have a degree in being a pianist. Right. You know, in order for them to get in the industry, they got to take their clothes off. Right. Be some provocative stuff, like mm -hmm. showing your ass and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter. My daughter is um, 18 years old and she's about to start college. Mm -hmm. But she's a singer. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm stand on, the thing that she has going for her is me to, to guide her. And I'm like, listen, if they don't want you for your music and your vocals and your singing, your actual artistry, mm -hmm. 
if they think that you're going to take your clothes off to be known or put on some some hooker type material, I was like, we ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not, mm -mm, we not going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think, I, you know, I can't really call it, you know what I mean? Because for me, I look at it as no school. You know what I mean? You know, I don't really look at all right, y'all doing what y'all doing. I might not dig that, but there's some mm -hmm. stuff, you know what I mean, in this big old pot that's for me as well. Yeah. So so that's kind of, you know, Sammy Hive view because the thing about it is, is, is like you said, you got to search. There is some stuff that you're going to dig that's new, but it's you got to search. There's a lot for. of stuff that's out there, man, yeah, that doesn't yeah. get the, th and this is the part of the industry that I can't stand because you don't make the playing field the same. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to do this other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, look, man, music is a, it's a choice. You, you you gravitate to what's what you like. Mm -hmm. You know you, what you might like. I might not like. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't say that it's it's not good, that it's good or bad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So just make the playing field. You know, even it out. Mm -hmm. Like let them see some of these underground, so-called underground cats that are doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I have my issue at with it all. You know, I shouldn't have to be seeing everybody stripping and selling sex and all this other stuff, man. Mm. Like, come on. So, um, so who who are some DJs that, you know what I'm saying, you tap in on? Man, ever since I've been on Twitch, man, I, I, man, I love everybody, man. Like, seriously, bro. Like, I was checking Finesse out today. I mean, <laughs> he's always been a, a damn problem. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I actually saw his show yeah. for the uh, very first time. And Finesse... Got DJ Newmark. Mm. You got uh, uh, I mean, I love all the legends. Like Scratch Bastard. Mm. Uh, uh, let me see, DJ A Skills, uh, Gaff. I've always been a fan of Craze, Cubert. Mm -hmm. Like, hold up, first of all, these guys out here mm -hmm. on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the, the female DJs. Mm. I say they are so tapped in because they. They, they home in on the actual skill of being a DJ, mm -hmm. whereas mostly on the East Coast, they got to take, they want to play that, that club music and be stripping. And, like, I be seeing <laughs> women, man, like, honestly, man, I'm like, okay, well, what makes her great? Right. You're saying that she's good. What makes her great? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, why she got to wear half-naked shit? That's why the, the, the female DJs on the West Coast are so much... Um, the skills are so much better, hmm. you know. Big that. Well, you know the West. You know we do things over here. That's yeah, y'all do, man. Yep. But, but um, so I right, that's that's interesting right there. Now I gotta ask you the one that's gonna trip everybody out. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer uh, to DJ in the states or you know send me overseas? I'm overseas, man. Overseas. First of all, venues are much bigger. Mm -hmm. The people are more in tune. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just a different communication, man, over there now, man. Like, and and plus, I'm a collector, so when I'm over there, I'm going to all the record spots, toy spots, clothing spots, every spot that I can get stuff that I couldn't find here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I, I've had before the pandemic, pandemic happened. Um, uh, I was in Asia quite a bit. Mm. Yeah, and I love it over there. I mean, come on, this is exotic. Is it because they treat you like royalty? And they treat you like royalty. Plus, uh, I have, plus it's, it's, I have so, I've acquired so many friends. Mm -hmm. And like, what this is all about now today is relations, relationships, man, mm -hmm. with everybody. Mm -hmm. And how to treat people because, you know, a lot yeah. of the DJs that are playing <laughs> these clubs, you know, the promoter who owns, well, the guy who owns the club don't know nothing about no music. Mm -hmm. It's the DJs that play every week mm -hmm. that be like, yo, we think you should bring cash. But they'll be like, oh, no, we want to bring this other guy who has uh, a million followers. and little. But the guys, the DJs are really pushing mm -hmm. because of my relationship. So they keep me working. I love them for that, man. I'm on that brainwash, we'll roll out the anonymous, underplay the overplay, strategic, I promise, Modo brings more.
Negroes, watching them heroes, pro lethal. Dream killers feast on people, Nubian Cindy, mine on the hunt. Paul Bear, sharp through with gates and piston bumps. No excuses, that's a sin. Back to the begin. Muscle memory, pseudo respect and revenge. Plays blindfolded, a bucket list with interest. Forgiveness to shadows and mirrors who handle business. Legacy, all grind, no guest list. Land in jurisdiction, make your bread prejudice. For the purists and the tourists, cue sticky for ghetto jurors. Swing high, swing low, you forgot that we do this. Bank selection, smooth DR5, underground icon, you have now been gentrified.